Hello there. In the previous lecture, we've successfully overridden Selenium find element. We've created three new methods, which two of them we've already used in our test, the get element by ID and the get element by class name. Today, we will study how to interact with sub elements. Before we'll get to that, I want to do with you something. As you can see, in the previous lecture, we've created all the methods that we are using in our tests in the test class itself. I want to transfer it to a more common place that all of our examples would be able to use those methods. So let's do it right now. Let's create a new class. We'll call it common actions. After we've created this class, we can take all of the methods from the previous lecture and we'll cut and paste it in our new class. Now all we need to do, now we can extend this class. As you can see, the driver that we have here, this, this object is coming from common actions. Because it's extending it, so we can use it as well. Now, let's start with our example of today. Okay, I've created a new class, it's called sub element example. Of course, it's extending common actions as we did in the previous test. And I want you to navigate to www.heraldtribune.com. We have a very nice example over there. In fact, let's go to this website. In this site, I want, as you can see, we have this menu above. If you right click on it, and inspect you would be able to see that the whole menu the container has an ID all of the childs of this menu which represent news photos tickets all of them doesn't have any ID okay so in order to access them we can have two options okay we can use expat expat is something really quite long that uh, will represent the hierarchy of the specific element in the screen a common expat might look like this it's very hard to read it and also it's very fragile if we'll use this expat let's say something is changing is in this hierarchy all of our tests will fail today we will study how to use a more sophisticated way and we call it get sub element in order to overcome the problem that I've mentioned before we need to go to common actions and to create two new methods the first method will be called get sub elements as you can see this is a plural form of element and the only thing we need to transfer to this method would be the parent element okay this is very similar to the method that we created in the previous lecture which is called get element but instead of returning a web element it will return a list of web elements so it will find any uh, suitable elements that answer to the to this uh, by okay and also we'll create a get sub element by CSS selector if we we'll go back to the, our website, as you can see, everything here is a CSS selector. But because here we have the ID, this should be our starting point. We'll start from here. This is our root, and then we'll dive in the hierarchy. The li HTML tag can be considered as a CSS selector. So as you probably guessed, we'll get the parent element, which is this one. And after that, we will get all the sub elements here in a list by providing the CSS selector li. Let's write it down now. As you can see here, I've got a menu element, which is the top ID. This is my root. This is my parent element. Then I'm using get sub element by CSS selector by providing the menu element and the li the li as you 
remember this is the HTML tag that we've seen here now after I have the list all we have to do is to traverse this list by using a for each loop as you can see my scenario was to look for a menu element which will be sport by the way as you can see we're using selenium directly on a, an object that we obtain during this uh, for each loop and also we are clicking it directly in the next lecture we'll also override those two selenium native methods but for now I'm looking for the word sports this is the string I'm looking for if I will find it whenever I'm traversing all of the list that I've got here I will print to my console that I found it then I will click on it I will change the found from true to false and I will break out otherwise my found will remain false the only thing we need to do now is to add our assert so I'm asserting this boolean variable if my element was found and then I clicked on it of course desired element was not found this is the message in, in case that I didn't find it otherwise my test will pass thank you very much and stay tuned to the next lecture